This video has been made possible through the support of our museum members. To become a member, visit charlesrivermuseum.org slash join. Please subscribe to follow us here on YouTube and hit like if you enjoyed this video. Good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Eyring. I work here at the uh, Charles River Museum of Industry and Innovation in Waltham. We have a number of very interesting collection items here, and we're here this morning to talk about one that is really, really interesting. I'm here with uh, Robert Wojnowski, and uh, Robert or, or Bob spent many, many years in the paper manufacturing business, which is a big industry going back into the 1800s here in, in Massachusetts and New England. Um, as an early employee in that business, Robert was so interested in the process that he actually built a model of the assembly line for taking paper pulp from trees and so forth and converting it into finished paper. And Bob is going to tell us about that process by walking us through the model. Yes, sir. So how are you doing, Bob? Very good this morning, Dan. Pleasure to see you. Nice to be here at the museum. Great. It's a wonderful place. We're happy to have you. So um, I didn't mention that where you started, and that was Rice and Barton Company out in Worcester. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about the history of Rice and Barton? When yeah, I will. Where from and, and when and how are they doing nowadays? I will. I'll start off with myself just as, as an early... When I was 14 years old, I couldn't wait, Dan, to get into trade school, to be a machinist. I wanted to work with machines that made things out of metal. And I was fortunate enough when I went to this trade school that I had an instructor by the name of Joe Carpenter. He was a, the man was a jack of all trades. He knew he was a very good instructor, teacher. He knew what he was doing. So when I graduated from trade school, I already had a job working in a machine shop. And he gave me a call one day and he said, Bob, Rice Barton and Fails, or Rice Barton at that time in Worcester, is going to start an apprentice program where they're going to take people with a limited background in the machine shop, and they're going to train people to work on machines to do their products. W would you be interested? Of course I would. So I went to Rice Barton. I applied for that position. I was accepted along with a lot of others, and, and I started an apprentice course in a machine shop. So I worked in the machine shop and the milling machine operator for about a year and a half, two years, and then an opening came up in the, in the assembly department. And in the assembly department, what they did would take sections of the paper machine, like this, small sections, they would assemble it, mark it, paint it naturally, disassemble it, and it would be shipped to the customer. Now, I was very interested and fascinated by that. So I bid on that job, I got into it, and once I was in there, or I'd say maybe a year or two, I was impressed and fascinated at how pulp wood make turns into paper. I, I just, it was in my blood, say, and so I, I just couldn't get enough of it. Now, did Rice and Barton make the, the wood pulping machinery as well? They, they made pulping uh, equipment as well as paper machine equipment. Yes, they did. That would... Uh, uh, make pulp out of it, and I, w I was I was very fortunate at Rice Barton because I I started there in an apprentice program, even in a in the erecting department. I would be assigned to an employee like you, Dan, that was there a while, and I would be they would call me like an apprentice boy, and Bob, well, I would work with you, and when you had a job to go out on, you always said, well, take can I have Bob along with me? So I was very I I was fortunate to work with different people that worked in a field for a long time. And that's how I got my start as far as going out and installing parts of the paper machine. Now, I, I understand that you know, for much of your career, you were a person who actually took an assembly line like this um, that had been delivered to some customer somewhere in the world, and you were responsible for um, getting the machine installed and, and up and running. Can you 
talk a little bit about that part of your career? Yeah, well, when, when, when after we assembled the, the product in the, in the assembly department and took it down and it was shipped out to the customer, they would approach one of the erectors, as they're called, the field erectors, to go out and to set this certain section or the machine in. Now, sometimes you could go out, like if you were going out on a reel, you could be gone maybe two or three weeks only. But if you were going out on the whole installation of a paper machine, you could be gone as much as eight months away from home. I was very fortunate to have a wife that was understanding of my uh, love of the paper industry because before we got married, she knew what I was doing as a job at Rice Barton. And uh, she said, Bob, when we get married, will you, uh, are you gonna stay home for a while, you know, being newlyweds? And I said, of course. She says, well, how about a year? I said, oh yeah. Well, lo and behold, it was only two or three months later that they asked me to go on a job. It was only out in Pittsfield, Mass, which is at the western part of the state. But I, I couldn't keep my ears promised, but I was working out there and she would commute back and forth on the weekend to come out to see me putting in this machine. So I'm fortunate then that she was there. And then when we went down to uh, uh, Spring Grove, Pennsylvania was the big job for me. I went down with the erector who was in charge of the machine. And then after they started to install it, he wanted a second erector down, so he called for me. So Pat and I went down, we had a four-year-old son. We lived in a mobile park in a trailer, and, and then after a couple of three months, the gentleman uh, had, a, had a medical problem, so he went back home in Worcester, and I took over the com finishing off the installation of this paper machine for P.H. Gladfelter. And it was close to uh, about six or eight, seven months that Patty was down there with me, and we were putting this machine in. And it. Oh, so you you you, you were a team. It sounds like it's not like both of you have been yeah. very wrapped up. Uh, I, I was fortunate to see your whole life. Yes, yes. That's great. Well, uh, we would want to get to the model uh, and and have uh, an understanding of how the model represents the, the process of making paper, but. Can you first tell me a little bit about how on earth you designed this and put it together and, and, and what kind of an effort was that? And, and then what happened to the model after you built it? I know that you built it and now it's here, but it, it's had a whole life over several decades. Okay. Well, once I started at Rice Barton and, and I was caught up with the process of making paper, I said, boy, I'm a model builder from way back when I was young man. With, with boats, planes, and whatever. And I said, boy, would I like to build a model of my own paper machine? So I started out making just little sketches here and there. And, and of course, being in trade school, you went through uh, mechanical drawing. So then I got down to, I'm going to make a, a more detailed drawing of this machine. And even though this has got rice button labels on it, it is not a copy of a rice button blueprint of a machine. It's a copy of Bob's blueprint. In other words, I made a, 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 a machine elevation blueprint of the whole machine, and then I took one section at a time, made detailed drawings of it, Dan, and then I wanted to build it. Well, when you come to building rolls off of the machine, because everything is made out of wood, I didn't have a wood lathe, and I could have gone out at that time and bought a wood lathe, but a fellow worker said, Bob, we can make our own. So I've got in my basement today a lathe that I made really? to turn all, anything that's round, gears or whatever, is wow. done on that machine. That's quite an achievement. Um, well, it must have taken you quite a while. Um, you have an estimate how many hours? The, the estimate, yes, I do. I have an estimate, Dan, that this model, from the time that I started it till the time I completed it, took me roughly 3,000 hours to build and design. Now, if you translate that, it's like if I worked eight hours a day for only one year and a half just on this. Now, after I, I built the model, I left Rice Barton after X amount of years, probably 24 years. And I went over to a, a neighbor uh, uh, machine shop that made doctors and cleaning equipment for Rice Barton machines and every other machine. So when I got over into that uh, plant and I worked my way up to be a general supervisor, and I would be talking to other people about a paper machine, and they had no idea what a paper machine looked like, what it did. They made the doctor blades or whatever, so I, I brought in my model into that plant. 
lighting engineering. And uh, when I brought it in, uh, from the chief engineer to the president of the company, they were, I'm not bragging, they were impressed at how detailed it was. Now, anything on my model that's in yellow would represent something that was manufactured by lighting engineering. And so... What is a doctor that you mentioned? That? What a doctor does is, it, 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 as the roll turns, and it gets bits of paper on it, or pulp, or stock. Now, the doctor is just like a, a razor blade, like uh, you're shaving your face. Like a wiper. It wipes it, it cleans the roll, so the next time the roll comes in contact with the paper, there is no contamination on the roll. Now you should know, it's interesting, that that name of a device, and the actual device, is quite common in the, in the textile business as well. Um, Pretty much the same purpose. It is. It is very much. And, and uh, it, you'll, you'll find doctorings even in the automotive plants where they do the steel for uh, treating the steel for, uh, you know, abrasive stuff and then cleaning the rolls. So it's, it, the doctor is, every machine has got to have doctors on it. Every machine has got to have showers and cleaning equipment. It's like the machine is the television and the cleaning equipment is like the knobs on the television. You can't turn the machine off on or off unless you turn the, the knob and you have the doctor. Okay, well, let's stretch our legs a little bit here. And uh, I think you'd like to start at the beginning and go to the end. So yep. I'm gonna back off and, and, and let you start at the process of um, say pulping paper and so forth and, and walk us through what each part of this machine does. That I. And we're interested in detail and I think we have enough time to, to get into detail, so. We're ready? We're, we're ready. Let's okay, go. Dan. So I'll start at this end of the model. The model, naturally, I built the model, I built the table for it, I built the whole thing so it would be, have a, a, a plastic covering and, and a, a place to, uh, to stay protected from dust and environment. Now, before I start my talk about the model, I want everyone to understand that this is the machine level of the, of the model up here, the gray. There would be a basement down below that there will be all kind of related equipment that gets product to and away from this model. Now when the stock comes in, when the stock is made, it, they, the most common paper today is made from trees, wood, pulp. You can make it from rag, you can make it from silk, you can make it from anything. But pulp is just trees that are uh, cut down, they're soft woods, most of them, but they can be hard woods too and they're chipped up, they're debarked. They take all the bark off the trees and they chip the, the, uh, the trees up to about thumbnail sized chips. And what they do with these chips is they go into a digester. It's, a, it's quite a process, but picture the digester as like a pressure cooker. The chips go into it at the top and they're cooked under pressure to soften them so that the fibers can be separated to make the pulp. And as the liquors are drawn off, like black liquor and green liquor, different liquors from the, 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 the wood, the pulp settles down, and then it is gone into a, a, a digester, where it would be, a, through the digester, it would go to a pulper, where it would be pulped up and made, mixed with water, and it would be uh, screened, so there's no impurities in it, and it comes out, I would say, like the consistency of a frap or a, a heavy malted milkshake. And when that comes to the mill, and this, this would be down on the lower section. It's in big vats, machine chests they call them, where the pulp is constantly agitated, and now it's gonna be fed, in, fed up to the head box, which is here, through a fan pump, which is a gigantic pump that forces the stock up into the head box. Now the head box is just what it starts, the head, everything starts. Inside this head box, there are rolls they call them distribu distributor rolls or holy rolls. How these rolls are made, they take a flat sheet of stainless steel, could be a quarter inch thick, could be a three eighths or half an inch thick. And they, they drill a series of holes. So they are probably a quarter of an inch space between all these holes. They roll the sheet up to make a whole roll out of it, but it's hollow. They put journals on it and they attach it. Inside this head box would be maybe two, three, four of these rolls. Some of them go clockwise, some of them go counterclockwise. And as the stock is fed up, these rolls keep it agitated, and there's air in here that will force the stock to come out on the apron here in a thin sheet of pulp. 
So now the stock is got up and it comes out onto the forming wire of the forward and air. Head box, forward and air. This is the most, one of the most important parts of the paper machine process. The, the, the pulp is really going to start setting up and making a sheet or a web on here. Now as it goes over this uh, conveyor, this conveyor is made, uh, it was in the, in the days when machines were made out of bronze. So bronze would, was, it's like a wire mesh, a screen, a bronze screen. And after a week or two, the bronze actually would wear out and it would break. Very expensive. Modern day machines now have a synthetic wire, poly, urethane, different kinds of material. So it lasts a lot longer, probably costs a lot more. Now as the stock comes out on, on these table rolls, there's a, a mess of little table rolls just to support the wire and the web. This is agitated across the machine back and forth this way so that the fibers don't just line up like this and say, we're going down the other end. Oh no, they're gonna interlock with each other as they go over this screen. And as they go over this screen, the water is drained down to the basement and it's reused, it's recycled. They don't just dump it in the river anymore, they can't. So as, that, as the paper goes down the screen, getting dewatered, it'll come into the series of these suction boxes. Suction boxes is a vacuum box, whereas the wire and the pulp goes over, it sucks to try to draw as much water out of this sheet, this web, as it possibly can. So once it gets through this process, now it's gonna go over into the press section. The press section is only a, 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 a means of squeezing the, the sheet of paper, again, to get as much water out of it as you possibly can. These rolls can be made out of granite, they can be made out of steel, they can be rubber coated, in this case they are rubber coated, and it's just squeezing the paper, giving it some body. The, the yellow parts that I'm showing you here now are the doctors, which would be cleaning these rolls as they pick up the pulp from the paper. Once the paper is formed up here to some extent, now it's gonna start to go into the dryer section. This dryer section is a, is a series of heated rolls, cast iron rolls, that steam is pushed into it on, in one end, and then they take out water and condensate on the other. This paper goes through the, the dryers as, in a figure eight configuration. The felt, which my wife made for me, is like a sandwich, a blanket, just to keep the paper be tight up against the, the, uh, the, the dryer. There's a top felt, and there's a bottom felt. So the paper is going through this section, getting dried. It takes a break through here, and it's gonna go in to another dryer section. It does a similar th operation as this, same way, and it, it is just further drying the paper. We get down to the, to the breaker stack, which is here. This breaker stack is just nothing more than like a little uh, two roll solid steel roll that kind of like irons the paper. It's trying to, to give it some thickness and, and size to it. So after it does its job here at, at the breaker stack, now we're going into the third dryer section. Again, third dryer section, second and first, they're all very similar. They all do the same amount of things on the paper machine, drying, drying. As the paper comes out of the dryer section, now we're gonna go into the size press. What the size press does is when a sheet of paper is made, it usually has like a, uh, it, it, it's porous section, it's porous. There's, there's spaces in there, then if you want to make a printing or writing on it, you, you want to fill in the little voids. So what they do is in this section, they add a sizing to it. It could be clay, it could be a mixture of combination of different factors in here, that it's just going to fill in all these little impurities that are in the paper sheet, top and bottom. So as the sheet comes out of the size press, now we're gonna go into the calendar section. Calendar section is chilled solid steel rolls. What a calendar section does, very similar than if you were ironing your, your hankies or your sheet shirts, what it's doing is squeezing this sheet of paper, ironing it, making it uniform thickness and, and, and flat and straight. We come out of the calendar stack, and now we're going into a reel. The, the first sheet of paper goes on the small reel, 
And as the reel goes around and it gets bigger and bigger, it's transferred onto the horizontal drum here so the sheet can build up, weighing very several, several tons of, of paper can be built up on here before it's taken off from here, and then it would go into the finishing room to be cut up with length, whatever the customer wants. So basically, this is a short story about the model or the industry of making paper from the beginning to the end. No. If this record has a, a typical installation, um, about how long would this be? Is this like a football field? Well, this model is built to a scale of one inch, uh, a half an inch equals one foot. So this model being roughly nine feet in length, the, the, in actual feet, this would be probably 230, 40, 50 feet long. So it is quite large, it's heavy, it takes a long time to build, construct, and to install. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a process that, uh, you know, every, I think most people take paper for granted. We don't realize it until we have a shortage of it, like we went through, but uh, it, 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 without it, we, we couldn't live without paper, let's face it. We go all the way back. So, um, how many um, assembly line installations like this did, did you have occasion to be able to go on? Well, to actually manage? It's funny because when you, when I started on my, you, you, you know, you, you, you would often be asked, what was the best job you ever went on? Well, it's either the last one you did or the next one you're going to. But in my case, the first job I ever went on on an installation was up in Seaman Paper in Gardner, Massachusetts. All we were putting in there was a dryer section, very similar to this. But that dryer section that we were putting in on that machine was the first dryer section that was going to be in there that had roller bearings. It wasn't going to be on a leaded bearing or a bronze bearing. So when we, would, when we installed, and this erector that was in charge of it, and I worked underneath him, he let me set in these rolls to give me the experience. Of course, I was nervous as, as all heck. And, and I had a crew working with me doing it, and when we got done, they were amazed that when the, on the back side here is all gears. And if you could turn one gear, then 10 dryers would turn all, and they were amazed at the ease at which this, all this massive material would rotate. Well, the so, bearings were good and everything the, was the, well lined up. Exactly. So that was, I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that job. I was very lucky, to, like I say, to go out on paper mills in uh, New York, Pennsylvania. One of my interesting jobs that way I went out of was out in Wirehouse of Paper out in La uh, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. What was interesting about that? It was a rice button machine. It was an older rice button machine. But one of the sections, and we'll just take this section, had settled. In other words, the, the foundation had settled, so the machine, all these rolls in here were cockeyed. So what we were going to do is go out there and while the machine is running, they're gonna make a bypass with the paper to go underneath the floor and come up over here, leaving this section that we could, the, we could take work on it while they're still in production. Yep, so we were able to disassemble this section, go back to the foundation plates, re-level everything, get it nice and straight, checked all the dark, uh, dryers, tested them, to make sure there were no cracks or anything like that. And we would reinstall this section while the machine was running. Once we did that and we got the, the section in, it was only a matter of hours before then that they were able to rethread the paper and go through this section. Like, it took us probably a month to do this. It's no easy, easy job. And it, it went back together again. It started up like it was just the first day that the machine was installed. Well, it was that simple. Satisfying. So it, it, was, it was quite, an, that was another uh, 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 interesting job. And I guess my jobs, if they said, Bob, you're going to go on a road for two weeks, for you, that don't happen. You've got to plan on four or six. Everything is longer. If you're going to be gone a month or two, Patty would say, uh-oh, you're not going to be home for three or four months. And that's usually the way things happen because when you're putting in an installation like this, Yes, Rice Barton is making the heart and soul of the paper machine, but we have so many contractors working with us, so many vendors that are supplying different parts to this machine, that if for some reason 
Their, their product isn't leaving their plant to get down when we're ready to install it. We have to find work around it, of course, but it only delays the process. So on a, on a new machine, like when we were down putting the one in, in Gladfelder, Gladfelder had se seven paper machines and we were putting in number eight. And it was fascinating to see the other seven running. Well, we would have weekly meetings to get the machine ready on time because they're already selling paper off this machine. So finally, as things would go, and it was slow process at different times for different reasons, at one of the meetings, the vice president comes into the meeting and he said, look, I don't care what it takes, but on this date, this machine is going to run. So no matter how many people you're going to get, how many hours you're going to get, there's no doubt in my mind that that machine is going to start making paper promise sold on that day. So you're under the gun. You, you did what you did. You had a lot of long days, a lot of long nights, but in the end result, I guess the satisfaction of seeing something run and produce paper after you, you spent so many hours and days and months on it, that was the reward. You know, it isn't just the money, it's the, it's the pride in seeing this thing work. Well, thank you very much, Bob. It sounds like it's been a fascinating career, um, particularly to people like me who have uh, no idea what large-scale manufacturing entails, the kind of machinery and, and the whole process of setting it up. So we're very lucky that, that you took the time as a young man to uh, capture that process forward in this model, and, and uh, even luckier that uh, you and I met up and, and you were able to come in and, and um, tell us about your life in the business and uh, describe the process for us. So well, thank you very much. You're welcome, Dan. The pleasure is all mine, and, and I'm, I'm very glad that the machine is here at this museum. I would encourage anybody that if they have any interest of this museum, go online, go to charlesriver.com in Waltham and just look through their video and see what they, what they have here. And models and different equipment, cars and whatever, come down here and pay us, them, a visit. And, uh, and I'm sure you'll go walk away from this place and say, my God, I never realized what, what they kept for posterity or over the years of, of, of equipment. So thank you again, Dan. Well, thank you for the advertisement. So.